What have you been doing since you've been here? Sleeping and shopping. Where have you been shopping? Harrods. Nice. Okay, have you been there before? No. Have you been to London before? No. Welcome First to London time. then. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I'm moving here. <laughs> yeah, we will be glad to have you. Oh, man. Like, I'm serious. Like, probably like next month. Seriously? Yeah, for a couple months, I'm going to be out here. Oh, man. Well, we need to do more stuff then. Of this, course. Is, this is just the I might have to record the beginning. Here. Working on another yeah. album. Okay. Well, we'll get into that. Yeah, I want to go. Let's start with last year because okay. we're heading into 2022 now. Right. What was last year like for you? How was 2021? Um, I mean, I can speak for everybody. It was crazy. You know, luckily I was blessed enough to to have a number one record in that, you know, hard time. So I'm very blessed to have that. You know, of course, it opened new doors. 2021, I did my first modeling campaign. Um, you know, and there's more of that on the way as well. And the album, you know, I've been working on this album for two years now, trying to curate it. And um, each song represents like a moment or a time where... I was, you know, either feeling good or not feeling good, you know, and that's why I titled it "On to Better Things" because, you know, all those moments put together, I'm basically just trying to move past that. It felt like that. I I was gonna say the album kind of covers everything from like love, loss, and everything in between. What were the specific points for you, kind of going into that? What were you? Where were you drawing from? Um, you know. So in the videos, you'll be able to understand it, you know, very clearly. But I was kind of just sitting in my own, like, dirt, like, just in the, in the wrong place, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I ended up getting addicted to drugs, and, you know, I was fighting that. And, you know, my health wasn't that good either um, all through 2021. So that's another reason why the album, you know, it's just, it's it's a big representation of who I am now. And, you know, I think my fans are going to love it because it's very authentic to me and, you know, it's the sound that they love. Totally, 100%. Like, it feels like an extension of what you've done before, but definitely an evolution as well. If I'm Right, yeah, because music's like my therapy, so I, I put everything in there. You know, I'm not scared to make a song about anything. Yeah. You know, because some people, like, I'm not the only one going through that. Some, someone else could hear that and, you know, it could help them out too. I think it will. I genuinely think, and especially after the year that we've just had and you being so honest and putting your truth out there about the deeper and darker stuff, I think that's where people are absolutely going to connect to this record and, you know, head on to better things themselves, you know? Right, yeah. I mean, you know, I was very depressed last year, I will say. And there's a song called Heavy in the album. And in the lyrics, I say, there's a place that I go in my head and that's how my dreams fly. So it's like... I don't know, I just block out the world, you know, and if I only see myself, who am I competing with, mm. you know? I think, you know, whenever you listen to the album, you'll be able to easily understand that some of the songs I wasn't in the right headspace, you know? I was taking a lot of stuff, you know, to stay up late, record a lot yep. of music, you know? And I'm here to say that I don't condone that. Anybody that's having trouble with depression or using drugs to cope, you know, with depression, veer away from it and get help because, you know, it's not the right path. And I easily, like, turned into somebody that I didn't recognize anymore. So that's another reason why, you know, the album is called that because I'm kind of looking back on all those memories and just letting them go finally, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, someone once described it to me. It's, it's like being lost in the woods. And if you get a chance, if, some, if someone brings a helicopter over and throws a rope ladder down, you just... Take it on and go. Yeah, Joel Madden told me one thing, and you know, I really appreciate him. He said that I'm a kid that fits in every single genre, but still doesn't know where he fits in this world. So, you know, that's something that really stuck with me, and I, I thought about it, and he's, he's very right. You know, sometimes I'd be feeling like I don't fit in anywhere. And that's why I lo love London. You know, I came out here, and I just feel like I fit in. You know, everybody's just, it's just a whole different world for me. There, there's a bunch of different cultures here, and I think it is that people use the term melting pot a lot, but it is that kind of thing where loads of people come together. And I was reading an article the other day that was just talking about how over the last year, loads of people who live in the city, you know, they live in a small apartment, they maybe don't have as much space as they'd like, and so a lot of people have moved out of London. And uh, they were sort of saying, it was someone who had previously moved out of London and moved back, and they were saying, the thing that I totally missed is you can hang out with people and have conversations about so many other things other than your local area or yourself or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, like living out 
you know, where I live, anywhere you go, it's like a, like business, you know, mm. you go to a party, you end up talking about business, you go to have dinner, you end, you end up talking about business, you know, like it's nonstop business. So like being out here is, it's really nice. It's refreshing. You know, like you yeah. said, you could sit there and talk to somebody and just enjoy your time. Yeah. And it genuinely is like that as well. I think, yeah. I think the more time you spend here, I hope that you you find that yeah i really love it here you know just like even like to like the architecture i pay attention to all that stuff like it's just it's beautiful out here so going back to sort of the feelings and everything you were having last year and the depression what was the thing that brought you out of that and kind of made you see a, a light in the distance um I th it was my best friend you know um i have my best friend that lives with me and he's been living with me since i recorded my first song you know i f recorded my first song in his closet <laughs> And, you know, I'd, I would disappear for like a week. I wouldn't even come home. I'd just be out partying, doing whatever. And um, I came home one day and, you know, he told me that he felt like we weren't best friends anymore. And, you know, that really got to me. I, I just, I left, I got in my car and I just drove as far as I could. Kept driving until I felt like I wasn't in LA anymore. And, you know, I, you know, I cried. I'm not scared to say that, but I like, that's the reason why I changed you know because yeah. for him to say that like you know it really like hit me deep because I'm partying with all these people they're not really even my friends you know like my best friend telling me that is yeah it's a different story yeah it's the person who can kind of who, knows, who knows, you, knows you knows you to your yeah. core yeah. yeah well it's good that you got someone like that in your life as well of it's course. important to hang on to those people right yeah so talking more about the album, you've got this kind of continued working relationship with uh, Travis Barker on a couple of the tracks on there. Obviously, you've been working with him for a little while now. Mm -hmm. How how is that relationship still working? How's uh... um, it's amazing, you know. People know Travis as a as a drummer, but he does everything. Hmm. You know, he produces. He he's very musically inclined, and I always love working with him. I feel like anytime we make a song, it's going to be a hit. It's. I feel like the energy that he's bringing back, like the renaissance of Travis Barker that we're having at the minute is just like when the world was just feeling gray and kind of like it wasn't moving anywhere. You have all of these songs that he's kind of working on and just like some of my favorite songs of the last sort of two, three years, he's yeah. kind of been at the helm of. It's kind yeah. of amazing. How did the relationship start and how was the connection made? And so on? You know, I met him a while back. Um, whenever I was working on Industry Plant, we made Dark Side. And I didn't meet him, you know, we just sent the track over, but then eventually, you know, I started hanging out with MGK and um, we went to Travis's studio and that's when I fully met Travis for the first time and the rest was history. I mean, that same day is when we made Sick and Tired and Nothing Inside. And then this last time we linked up, we made, you know, a song for my album. And Was, was that... Obvious, or was it the the final track? Which no, one was the one that? I uh, thought it was. Yeah. Thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's a very special track for me because, you know, I'm just talking about how you could be. I could be in a room full of people and I still feel alone. You know, yeah. I, I just talk about how alone it feels in California, and you know how, really, I'm not around anybody that I actually love. You know, around a bunch of people that are wearing costumes. So that that just goes to show that it doesn't matter how much money you have, if you don't you know, the right things in your life, then you're not going to be happy. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that, that I was learning this year. I mean, to go from, you know, you're a widely known successful artist and then mood comes out and then that must have been an enormous shift, not only just in the way that you're having to think about your career and approach your art, but in the way that people are treating you, the way that people are talking to you, the different types of people that are suddenly getting in touch and trying to balance sort of like, you know, is this a genuine thing? Is this a, you know, like, how no, how do you know, balance that? Um, sometimes it's not genuine, you know? Sometimes it's just business. That's mm. just how, you know, music works sometimes. But majority of the time, I can't work with an artist that I'm not friends with. Yeah. You know, how are we supposed to make good music if we don't even like each other? Yeah. You know? Um, so I always like to work in the studio with the artists and, you know, see what happens. Yeah. Which I guess, again, in the past couple of years has been a harder thing to do for people that maybe aren't local. Yeah. And yeah. You know, given everything that's been going on, but I feel like now it's a lot easier to, to get in the studio with people and, you know, just make some good music. Absolutely. Yeah. So going back to the new album, are there any other songs on there? I've heard the whole thing, listened to it a lot. Um, are there any specific songs on there? 
other than Thor was that you feel really kind of summarized the album or are sort of like check check marks kind of in the album like different points um you know i love complicated i think yeah. that's that's a that's a really good record that my fans are going to enjoy um i love sinking which is an interlude but um just the things i'm talking about it's just like it, it very like much shows how i felt you know in these moments and a lot of these songs i recorded laying on the floor yeah. That's like that's like my new thing. I just lay on the floor and just pass me the mic and the headphones and I'll just record. But um, and I love Obvious. Obvious is definitely one of those records for me. And I know that my fans aren't very open to rock music yet for, for from me. But in the future, you know, that's my favorite music to make. That, I can hear like a hint of Paramore in that song. It just like, yeah, it comes so natural to me. Like yeah. the first rock song I made was Sick and Tired. You know, so like after that, I fell in love with it. And, you know, me and Kills have so many songs or MGK have so many songs that aren't even released, you yeah. know, like that we just made for fun. Um, but yeah. And it's interesting as well what you said earlier about sort of being genreless and kind of unpigeonholable. Like people don't know where to place you. And I, you know, I've had conversations where people would be like, oh, yeah, Ian Dior, he's a great rapper. And I'm like, well, he doesn't really rap. Like you're a singer. Yeah. Um, and, I, I guess, how is that for you? Does it bother you kind of being put in a rap lane, even though it's not necessarily what you do, but more maybe because of like who you work with? You know, nowadays, no, I don't care what anybody says. You know, I'm just a kid that could do anything. That's yeah. how I see it. And if you need me on a Spanish record, I got it. If you need me on a rock song, I got it. R&B, cool. Hip hop, cool. Pop, cool. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. I, it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. That's great. I mean, that, that's the truest way to kind of approach art as well, right? Yeah. You can literally just do, you can find the vibe, the mood, the instrumentation that feels right for that moment. Yeah, and, you know, there's always a way to blend um, whatever you're good at with something else. You yeah. Know? Like, mood is a perfect blend of pop and rap. You know, it's a, it's a pop melody with trap drums. Yeah. So it's the best of both worlds. It's one of those songs that, like, as soon as you've hit, like, and I feel like with this, with the new album, like, I was like, I, I can't tell what are going to be the singles on here because you could pick any of those songs as a right. single. Like, yeah. they've all got hooks. They've all got the really kind of catchy um, instrumentation, but the the chord progressions are deep. It's got that emotion in kind of every single song as well, and then the lyrics are kind of going even deeper and darker. Right. Um, it's kind of that perfect blend. Like, um, is that... Are you consciously going into everything thinking that? Yeah. You know, um, I just want to show people what I could do. And like you said, I'm still trying to find my place in this world. So what better way to do it than just put multi-genre in an album? Completely. The voice is always yours. I think that's yeah. the thing. No matter what path you're going down, it's, no matter what time, it's always you. Yeah. Um, are you still working with Omer? I haven't seen the credits for the mm -hmm. album. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I've been working with Omer since, you know, I first moved out to L.A., so that's someone that I'll, I'll always work with. And, you know, I, I really respect him and shout out to him for, for having an insane last year. And, you know, I'm sure this kid's going to go crazy this year, too. You know, he's super talented. How would you... Because I think writers often go under the radar for, you know, for more pop audiences and stuff like that. For people who don't know Omer Fetty, how would you describe him? Uh, well, we became really close because we realized we had the same birthday. Nice. So that's how it all started in the Which studio. Is... March 25th. I mean, Omer's just a regular dude, you know? He studied he studied music in high school. Like, you know, now, like, all that hard work that he put into, into the guitar is paying off because he's one of the best in the game right now. He really is. You yeah. Know, he's very talented. I think you probably made my favorite music video of last year with Shots in the Dark, oh. which just looked like the most fun ever to you know, you know shoot. that video was so hard to shoot okay we were literally in the desert like and it was f hot and i'm in like a space suit so like it was crazy to shoot um but we had so much fun you know we had the polarises like the, the off-road things and we were just ripping it out there in the desert while we we're shooting the video so it was a lot of fun um but yeah i've been heavily getting into directing all my videos you know i directed that one you directed that congratulations yeah. that's it's a sick video man like really really good thank you yeah i've been heavily getting into directing you know that's what i originally wanted to do like i could see myself like at 50 years old or something you know, yeah directing movies um but for now i'll just direct my videos and you know i'm just trying to show my fans like Mentally and physically, I'm not here. I'm in my own world. And I'm here to invite you into that world.
this, I just wanted to share some of these videos with you. We, when we were doing some research and stuff, we found some people that had done some really great artwork of you. Oh, wow. Um, and we just thought we'd share it with you to yeah. sort of have a look and get your reaction, if that's cool. Yeah, let's do it. Wow. She is going in. I've never seen that. Wow. That is so sick. That's cool, right? Yeah, it's super sick. Out of 10, what would you rate that? That's a 10 to me. That's really nice. Yeah, I love the red as well. Yeah, she, she went crazy. Mm, I know what picture he's doing. Wow. I love when people make art with just a bunch of dots. Damn. Out of 10, what are we saying? I mean, they're all 10s. This they're all good. sick. Is he making a tiny piece of art? Huh. That's very hard to do. And That's incredibly <laughs> Wow. That's insane. Oh my God. This is my favorite one. So detailed. That's wow. crazy. That's what? my favorite one. Out of 10? That's 11. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Drip me out. Yo, I need to make one of those. What's going on? What are we rating the Funko Pop, Ian Dior? Um, we're going to rate it sold out. <laughs> we need that. That's crazy. Oh, she's going crazy. Stop. That's fucking sick. That's sick. That's amazing. Yeah. I think the, um, the one that I rated 11 and this one are my favorite one. Well, I think they're going to be delighted that you've seen them as well. Like, we'll Man, I mean, these are amazing. Thank you to all the fans that are creating art with my face and, you know, listen to the music. I love you guys so much. And this is amazing. I want to talk to you about artwork. We just had a look at a bunch of artwork. Mm -hmm. Your album artwork, what's the sort of inspiration behind it and how involved are you in that process? Well, I'm using a Greek symbol, which is one of the oldest symbols in the world. And it means... You know, it has everything to do with life. And I took that symbol and I made it rigid, you know, and not so smooth because my journey has been like the smoothest. It wasn't perfect. I don't think anybody's life is perfect. So when I look at that symbol, yeah, it, I like what it represents, but it, it realistically, like nobody's life looks like that. I use the color purple because it's the color royalty and that's how I like to carry myself. You know, from being homeless to where I'm at now, I'm just thankful for everything, and you know that's that's how I want to carry myself. We always like to have gifts for our guests. Oh, so I love gifts. We have these made up for you. Oh, these are crazy! Wow.
awesome. Oh, they're diff. Whoa. Who made these? She's right over here. This is Mel. Hi. <laughs> wow, these are insane. I was very nervous with this one. Thank, thank you so much. I'm glad you liked them. You snapped on this far. This is insane. Wow, thank you guys so much. Um, cool. Well, on that note, uh, we'll wrap up, but it's been an absolute pleasure to, to meet you finally. Likewise. Properly. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And honestly, like if you're in London, feel free to hit us up. If you want to, even if you just want to know like where's, where's good to go shopping, where's good to eat, anything like that. Of course. We're around. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll give you a fist bump for COVID safety. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Likewise. And uh, yeah, I hope we get to do something again soon. Yeah, of course. I really enjoyed this interview. All right, guys, I'm Ian Dior. Make sure you go stream my new album that just came out on to better things. Yeah.